What's up everybody, it's Nick, back with Keep Believing Fitness, coming at you with a video today that's a little bit on the science end, and I'm going to be talking about the muscle contraction process and how it occurs. This only applies for the isometric exercise, as in the length of the muscle doesn't change and the tension remains constant, or dynamic concentric movements, which is the shortening of the muscle, as in you know a standard bicep curl that's concentric. I'm going to put up a picture of a myofibril or a muscle cell and this, that's going to help you understand a little bit more of what I'm talking about. The portion that you're going to look at is a sulcar mirror which is made up of the contractile proteins acting in myosin and where all this occurs. Now what first happens is there's an action potential conducted which is an electrical current deep into the cell by the transverse tubules. Those are the things the little blue tubes on the outside. Um, the webbing that you the webbing substance that you see is this sarcoplasmic reticulum. There we go. Uh, anyway, there's the action potential conducted deep into the cell by the transverse tubules. After that occurs, there's a level of calcium secretion by the terminal cisternae on the of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The terminal cisternae are what are next to the transverse tubules and that secretes calcium into the cell. Um, after that, there's a surge in free calcium levels, and that is the number one definer of the amount of force you can generate. If the surge is low, the amount of force you can generate will be low, and vice versa. Uh, the second step in the process is there are calcium receptors on troponin. Troponin, I'm going to put up another picture here, is a a, um, a substance that is on actin, okay? And now when, that, when the uh, calcium levels are low, there's no attraction between troponin and calcium. However, when the surge of free calcium is high, the calcium binds to the troponin receptors, creating a troponin-calcium complex. Okay, that's a, and that will be a whole new chemical. This is where the sliding filament theory comes in, Tropomyosin, which is another chemical on actin, slides off the binding sites on actin. Okay, it moves off the binding sites, which make the sites available for myosin, the other contractile protein, to attach to it. The myosin head, which is a little bit of a, a circular globular kind of thing, um, I'm going to put up here it is here, um, attaches to the binding site. Now this myosin head has ADP and PI on it, which is adenosine diphosphate and a separate phosphate ion on it. When the myosin head attaches to actin, it forms the actin-myosin complex. Okay? Every muscle tension event starts with the formation of the actin-myosin complex. Now after the complex is formed, the power stroke begins to occur. The power stroke is when the muscle itself contracts. Okay, what happens is it starts with the PI molecule that was on the head, where there had ADP and PI on it. The PI comes off of the myosin head and releases its energy to pull actin towards the middle of the sarcomere. The Z discs, which are on the outside of the sarcomere, they are attached to actin and are pulled towards the center. Okay, now what happens is the power stroke continues to occur to full relaxation of the myosin head, which means it, it continues to happen until muscle tension production is stopped. When it is stopped, the ADP comes off the head as well at the end of the power stroke and forms what's called a rigor bond between actin and myosin. Now, I want to break the bond so that more heads can continue to attach to actin and the contraction process can continue to occur. What's called myosin head recycling needs to occur. And for that to occur, the rigor bond that's formed needs to be broken. And that is done by ATP being loaded back onto the myosin head, which then again breaks down into ADP, NPI, and energy. The energy is used to bring the myosin head back into position so that it's ready 
to be attached again. And the Akamazi complex is formed, and that whole cycle continues to occur. Now, once contraction is stopped, and you stop lifting, complete your set, etc., there's a decrease in calcium. Well, whereas the uh, calcium secretion from the transverse tubules happened in the beginning, now the calcium is going to be uptaken again by those same transverse tubules. The muscle contraction process has completed. But that's it, guys. That's just a little background information of how the muscle contraction process occurs. I apologize if it's if you think it's unnecessary information or you're thinking. I didn't really need to know this, this is too complicated, blah, blah, blah. But it was something I wanted to share. I thought it was something interesting that a lot of people might be curious about. So I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, keep on working, keep on believing, never give up, have a great day.